we have been we've spent a year since i announced the founding of democracy defense initiative right here in beautiful langley almost one year ago we spent a year developing a list of supporters and people who agree with what we're doing we've set up a website www dot democracy defense dot ca we have held rallies and we have held events across canada across british columbia last spring and then going into alberta and saskatchewan and ontario in ontario in november we held a rally in defense of conscientious objection for the medical professions in relation to medically assisted death medically induced death i should say and this week we are holding a series of events across the province of british columbia in defense of freedom of religion every day this week i have attended with others to an office of a different venture of the law society of british columbia i will be at a location again tomorrow in vancouver and on friday i will be in abbotsford to, to uh, petition the venture there uh, we spend an hour after we deliver our message our letter to the venture we spend an hour passing out copies of it open open letter to the law society to passers-by so that they will become informed about the issue that concerns us and we have little signs which simply say stand up for freedom of religion and i would invite you to join me either tomorrow in, in uh, vancouver or uh, friday on in abbotsford i'll be in prince george on monday and in uh, smithers on tuesday but i don't expect you to fly that far with me the i would like you to take with you when you leave tonight a copy of the letter to the law society that we are delivering you'll find it on the table out there with a nice golden letterhead for democracy defense initiative you will also find a larger eight and a half by 14 sheet titled on constraining civil authorities which will explain to you why it is so important that we stand up for freedom of religion and why it is that authoritarians and tyrants and uh, other civil authorities are so quick to try to stamp out free belief and free conscience and freedom of religion. All of you here, I think, are aware of the Trinity Western University case and the issue at, uh, that Trinity Western has with the Law Society, but I was speaking to a very well-informed man in Vancouver today who really didn't even know what the issue was. You're living here in Langley. I expect most of you know what the issue is, but many people don't. What we have to do is really nothing more than uh, the kind of political campaign that you see goes on at election time. There are lawn signs out right now for the British Columbia election, and there are people knocking on doors handing out literature. And you may even see candidates standing on street corners, stupidly waving at people as they go by. I've done a lot of that myself. This is the way that we influence people politically. We influence them first by telling them what we stand for in a way that shows we care so that we can make them care about it. I don't know if it was Albert Einstein who said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting to get a different result. How many of you have sent an email to one of your elected representatives? Anybody? Quite a few. Do you think it changed their mind? I can tell you it rarely does. How many of you have signed a postage-free postcard and mailed it in to your elected representative? Almost as many. Again, do you think it changed their mind? No. I'll tell you why those things, which we do over and over and over again, don't change the minds of many of our elected representatives. And you know what I can tell you? I've spent time, I've spent a half hour, an hour, with elected representatives
this using reason and facts and evidence and logic and still haven't changed their minds. And I'll tell you why. It's because elected representatives, like most of us, are motivated by self-interest. And unless we can demonstrate to our elected representatives why it is in their interest to agree with us and to protect our freedoms, they have other fish to fry. How can it be in their interest to protect our freedoms? Well, it certainly isn't going to matter to them if nobody cares. Mm -hmm. If we only care enough to push a button on a computer, it's very easy for an elected representative to say, oh yeah, that's, that's their opinion, but it's not, to use a pollster's word, it's not salient. It doesn't really mean very much to them. We have to actually show our elected representatives, and even our judges, by the way, who do pay attention, they don't completely wall themselves off in an ivory tower, they read the headlines, they know what people care about. They listen, and they make their decisions on that basis, too. So we have to let our legislators, our judges, the opinion makers in our society know that we really, really care about freedom. And we can't do that by sitting at home, pushing a button to send an email, or even signing a postcard and dropping it in the mail. We have to do something, we have to make a sacrifice. In fact, the, the political effect you have is directly proportional to the effort and time and investment and sacrifice that you make in sending that message. It's really just like a political campaign in election time. Imagine if a candidate sat at home or just sent emails to everybody. We heard Pierre Lemieux all the way out here in Abbotsford from Ottawa where he lives. Why is he doing that? To show that he cares. If he sat at home, you'd say, well, he doesn't really care. Why should we pay attention to him? And it works the other way around too. Politicians will think you don't care and will ignore you if they think you don't care. So I want to invite you to join me in a simple political campaign. We don't have a party name but we have lawn signs. We don't have a party platform, but we have political messaging on paper to give out to people, to let them know what the issue is, to let them know how important it is. And uh, so I'm hoping that you might think about showing that you care about freedom by joining me tomorrow or in Abbotsford on Friday in order to uh, spread the message. Now, uh, I guess I'm not going to try to uh, go through the details of the Trinity Western issue with you, but if you read this, which is out front, uh, 